hi children welcome back to our uh, geography lesson today and in the last video i have made known to you about the theory of tectonic plates under this i told you about the three important movement of tectonic plates they are number one convergent boundary divergent boundary and a transform boundary these are three important movements uh, we discussed in the last video and uh, today let us discuss about the india's uh, landmass okay india's landmass okay my dear children let us discuss now let me tell you about india's landmass okay in the last uh, uh, video uh i told you about the three important uh, uh, plate tectonics theory of uh, theory of uh, important movement of uh, tectonics okay they are convergent boundary divergent boundary and uh, transform boundary and now today let me tell you about the india's landmass india is a large landmass formed due to during different uh, geological periods uh influenced by itself by its relief yeah. india is a large landmass formed during different geological periods which have influenced its relief what is the relief all the mountains okay plateaus all the uh, rugged areas and all the hills everything okay and the plains all this come under relief and especially the mountains and so on so india is a, a large landmass formed during different geological periods which have influenced its relief processes such as weathering erosion and deposition have created and modified the present landform so my dear children in the beginning you see we had only one continent supercontinent which is called pangea pangea yes pangea we have a supercontinent called pangea see my dear children previously we had a, a supercontinent which is called pangea and here in this picture you can see we have the only single continent a single landmass we had yep. okay long ago some millions of millions of years ago we had a single uh, landmass a single continent and that continent uh, was known as pangea okay it was called pangea so india is a large landmass formed due to different geological periods which have influenced its relief processes such as weathering erosion deposition have created and modified the present landform and today we know very well we have different okay six continents so all these continents are formed due to okay uh, due to weathering erosion and deposition okay the processes such as weathering erosion and the deposition which have created and these and these have modified the present landform is it clear to you my dear children yes due to weathering erosion what is weathering breaking of breaking up of the rock okay weathering erosion you know very well erosion soil erosion okay and deposition okay by these processes okay the present landform have been has been modified so the processes such as weathering erosion and deposition have created and modified the present landform now let me tell you gondwana land the gondwana land includes india in the beginning that means some 225 to 70 millions of years ago the gondwana land includes our india includes okay yes part of gondwana land so the gondwana land includes india australia south africa south america 
Antarctica. Remember, my dear children, the Gondwana land includes India, Australia, South Africa, South America, and Antarctica as one single land mass. All this is one single land mass. We can call it as Pangaea. It was the southern part of a supercontinent Pangaea. Yes, it was. Okay, this Gondwana land was the southern part of a supercontinent Pangaea. The northern part uh, was known as uh, Angara land. So, my dear children, the southern part of this Gondwana land, it was it was it was the Gondwana land was the southern part of a supercontinent Pangaea. And what was there in the northern part of this Pangaea? That was called Angara. There were two important, uh, okay, uh, land masses. They are uh, Gondwana and uh, Angara. Gondwana land and uh, Angara land. Okay. Just before I have uh, shown you the Pangaea. Uh, this is the supercontinent Pangaea. See. India is also part of that Pangaea. Some 250 million years ago, we had this kind of uh, single continent, my dear. Okay, single land mass we had. Okay. And uh, now, formation of major landforms in Indian. Land mass. Now let me tell you how. Okay, the major landforms in our country are formed. Okay, during Mesozoic era, that is 220 to 70 million years ago. Okay, yes, and that time was called that era was called Mesozoic era. Long back pre-Cambrian times. Okay, during Mesozoic era, that is Mesozoic era that exists at 225 to 70 million years ago. Very, very old, okay, long, long ago, 70 million years ago, there was a sea called Pedis. Mm. 70 million years ago, there was a called a, 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 a sea called Tedis Sea. Okay, yes, during Mesozoic era, there was a sea called Tedis, and this is Tedis Sea was located between ancient continents of Gondwana and Angara. Two landforms I told you just before they are Gondwana and Angara. There were two land masses, Gondwana and Angara. So it was located between the ancient continents of Gondwana and Angara. Which one is located between uh, Gondwana and Angara? Tedis Sea. Okay, uh, Tedis Sea. Where is the Tedis Sea? Uh, and this uh, Tedis Sea, which is also called as uh, geosyncline. It is called geosyncline, a narrow, shallow, elongated basin. Yes, which is called geocycline, which is known as Tedis Sea. Simply, it is called Tedis Sea. Okay, so it was located. This this is uh, Tedis Sea was located between the ancient continents of Gondwana and uh, Laurasia. Okay, my dear children. Uh, this here, here, this Tedis Sea, which was located between the ancient continents of Gondwana and uh, Angara. So, Tedis Sea began to get compressed. Okay, and this, this Tedis Sea began to compress over next few million years due to immense compressional force. The sediments in the Tedis Sea were folded to acquire the present form of uh, Himalayas. That is the okay, origin of or genesis of Himalayas. In such a way, Himalayas were formed some 70 million years ago in the Mesozoic times, in the Mesozoic era. Okay, uh, due to uh, Tedis Sea, uh, today we cannot see this Tedis Sea, but it was there. Okay, where the Himalayas are now located. Okay, yes. So here, Tedis Sea or geosyncline, the Himalayas were formed as a result of the upliftment and folding of the sediments in the uh, Tedis Sea, my dear children. So, in the Tedis Sea, all that sediments uh, that were uplifted and later 
they folded and formed like Himalayas. Likewise, Himalayas were formed, okay, from Tedisi. It was formed from Tedisi, my dear children. Okay, so Tedisi began to get compressed over next few million years due to immense due to compressional force. The sediments in the Tedisi began to rise up, and later they get okay. Uh, later they get compressed and folded they, they they get folded and later formed into a, a great himalayas which we have today okay that is the origin of the himalayas okay so in the place of himalayas previously there was a tedisi so tedisi was responsible for the formation of himalayas okay the sediments in the tedisi okay folded and formed into himalayas that is the okay formation of a himalayas and now let me tell you about the physiographic divisions let me tell you about the physiographic divisions the physical features of india can be grouped into the following divisions okay now physiographic divisions now let me tell you about the physiographic divisions the physical features of india can be grouped into the following divisions they are number one okay geomorphological features we can say uh, physical uh, physiographic divisions are also called uh, geomorphological features okay uh, what the what are the geomorphological features or physical or physiographic divisions they are remember the physical features of india can be divided into the following divisions they are number one the himalayas number two the northern plains number three the peninsular plateau number four the indian deserts number five the coastal plains and number six uh, the islands okay so these six are the important uh, geomorphological features of uh, india is it clear my dear children i will tell you again the first one himalayas the physiographic divisions of india number one himalayas number two northern plains number three Peninsular Plateau, number four, the Indian deserts, number five, the coastal plains, and number six, uh, the islands. Okay. Now we are going to learn about these physiographic divisions uh, one by one. Okay. Now let me tell you the first important, uh, the foremost, first and foremost important uh, physiographic division that is called the Himalayas. Let us discuss. The Himalayas, okay. The Himalayas. Just before I told you how the Himalayas were formed, okay, from Tedisi, the Himalayas were formed some seventy million years ago. That I told you. And now let me tell you about the the first and far most important uh, physiographic division of India. That is the Himalayas, the Himalayan mountain. The Himalayas are young fold mountains. They form an arc covering a distance about twenty four hundred kilometers. Okay, my dear children. Okay, yes. From north to east, okay, yes, the Himalayas are formed, okay, they are formed like an arc covering a distance of about 2400 kilometers. And here in the picture, you can see the Himalayas, okay, the pinnacle of the Himalayas, okay. The Himalayas are young fold mountains in the world, they are the youngest folded mountains. Himalayas are the youngest folded mountains in the world, they form an arc covering a distance about 2400 kilometers. And their width varies from 400 kilometers in Kashmir. Its its width. Their width varies from 400 kilometers in Kashmir. And when we move towards east, 150 kilometer in Arunachal Pradesh. Its width is 400 kilometers in Kashmir, and 150 kilometer in Arunachal Pradesh in the east. So, like an arc, these Himalayas are formed by the children. The Himalayas consists of three important parallel ranges. Now, let me just tell you what are the important ranges of Himalayas. Simply, we call Himalayas, but there is we can see three important ranges that are found in the Himalayas. They are number one, Himadri; number two, Himachal; number three, Shivaliks. These three are the important ranges or parallel parallel ranges of Himalayas. Now, 
first of all let me tell you about the himadri himadri which is also called as greater himalayas second one himachal which are also called as lesser himalayas and based upon based upon the height the himalayas the ranges of the himalayas are classified into greater himalayas lesser himalayas and outer himalayas the highest okay himalayan range which is called himadri that is called greater himalayas then second one lesser himalayas which are also called himachal and the third one lesser heights they are shivaliks which are also called outer himalayas and today i will tell you uh, now uh, himadri and here i stop okay after telling you about the himadri i will stop here now let me tell you about the himadri the first range okay parallel range of himalaya himadri himadri as i told you which is also known as greater himalayas it is the northern most range and which is also known as as i told you himadri which is also called as a greater himalayas it consists of the loftiest peaks yes my dear we know very well about the the last highest peak okay uh, mount everest and kanchanaganga makalu all these ranges are uh, are found generally in the himadri so all the loftiest highest peaks are present in the himadri so it consists the himadri consists of the loftiest peaks with an average height of 6000 meters okay yes all the peaks in the himalayas particularly in the himadri uh, the average height of these uh, peaks is uh, 6000 meters and we know very well the tallest the highest mountain peak in the world that is everest this mount everest uh, which is now in uh, okay nepal of course and this is also a part of uh, everest also part of himadri and now here uh, in india we have kanchanaganga which is the highest peak of the himalayas in india okay of course mount everest is not in india but it is uh, it lies in nepal but whereas uh, our highest mountain peak in himalayas is kanchanaganga which is the highest peak of the himalayas in india with a height of 8598 meters okay my dear children and whereas the highest peak as i told you mount everest remember the height of the mount everest 8848 8848 meters okay yes the highest peak uh, mount everest 8848 meters uh, and this mount everest lies in nepal my dear children this is all about the himadri the first range parallel range of uh, himalaya likewise in the coming videos i'll tell you about the himachal shivaliks and the benefits of himalayas and so on okay in the next video we shall discuss okay about all the remaining parallel ranges till then goodbye my dear children bye Thank you.